With the Advantech subfloor assembly, you can be sure that you're building a reputation on something stronger. And the best builders, well, they may always stand apart, but they never stand alone. So ask yourself, are you bringing your A-game? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Before the Build series, Steve Basic here, and today we got a special detail. It's not one of your typical details. You know, when you design a house, there's a set of details that are probably pretty similar to the last house you designed, where the slab meets the foundation wall or water table or band joist area, but today we have a floor transition area. If you remember on that house, um, the Hilltop Arrow um, project there. We have part of the house is on basement, part of it is on those beautiful board formed brick, uh, board formed concrete piers. But anyways, you have a transition there where we're transitioning from the floor frame that is over a basement to the floor frame that is over air or outside unconditioned space. So there's a few things that we have to pay attention to there, a few building science challenges, all easily overcome with the help of our buddy Big Red. So let's dive in, let's look at the details, and let's talk floor transition. All right, so let's talk about that floor transition detail. Pulled out the section there, we got it right here. And uh, remember, this is basement over here, for the floor frame and then the floor frame over there is over air and then we're inside here and we're inside here and then we're out or inside here and outside here so there's a lot of things that are happening along that line but we're going to concentrate our video on this detail there so let's take a look at that let's rip us through that video drawing all right, <clears throat> so let me give you the location. There's that foundation wall, so the basement wall. You notice there's our reinforcing bars, there's our anchor bolt, there's our double mud sill. <clears throat> and then basically the floor frame sits on top of that. There's our rim board. So that's basically the outside of the floor band joist area. Even though it connects to that one, I still like to treat the inside space and that space, even though it's inside, put that environmental separator there of a band joist. So we have our truss here on the inside and then our floor sheathing is consistent pretty much across there. It's our 7 8 inch Advantech. And then up here, you'll see we have our bottom plate and then we have our T-stud wall there. No insulation because this is inside and this is inside. So there's no reason to have a thermal boundary there. Down here, we talked about it in our basement footing detail, but basically we have two inches of rigid insulation there. And then we have a three and a half inch cavity here filled with an unfaced bat and that goes up and it's closed off onto our floor frame. And there's our floor trusses inside the space. And then outside of the space, we have that first floor truss and it sits neatly up against that band joist area and goes out. We have zip R9 closure at the bottom of that. And the rest of that 14 inches is filled with, you know, probably roughly R64-ish cellulose in there. And then we have our R9 here. So R70, R73-ish floor frame. And at the top to provide continuity here, we did just a little bit, four inches of closed cell spray foam. And we did the same thing on that side to seal it up. I know some people would suggest that 
flow cell doesn't make for a good air barrier, but you know, it's like anything, the execution of it is probably more than half the issue of getting it right, getting good installers that understand it. Um, so I've always had extremely good experience with this, but you know, Jake has done a, a really good job air sealing and, and getting those details right. So um, I'm not too concerned and we tested this house out. It's, yes, you know, it's already some um, lived in is being lived in as we speak and it's operating at well below passive house standards of 0.60. So anyways, this is that transition detail. So as far as water management goes, well, there's really not a whole lot happening here because it's inside space above. We do have some exterior ground space and we talked about that dimple mat in the footing detail. As far as air management, well, we have, you know, our concrete wall and we have our zip R9 taped and then it's masticked all the way down to the foundation wall there and sealed up. And then as a secondary air barrier in this system, we have that closed cell. So we're not relying on it as the primary air barrier, but it does, uh, let's say, aid in the air tightness there. And then of course, up above that, we don't care so much because it's inside across both areas. Um, as far as vapor goes, well, this here can dry to the inside. This can dry to the inside. Our wall dries to the inside here. We have a fully uh, full whole house um, ventilation system in, a, in Zender. So we get distribution all throughout the house. Really good and extraction, exceptional extraction through there. So I'm not really worried about the big old bad vapor monster. And then as far as our thermal boundary, well, we just talked about that, right? We have our unfaced bat with rigid um, battling the foundation wall. And we pick up the closed cell in that cavity. We have our zip R9 with cellulose. And then we pick up the closed cell in that cavity. So that's basically the transition of this interior basement space and how we transitioned out to the floor frame that is above here. And remember, you know, control layers, when it comes to control layers, you know what my favorite word is? Continuity is key. Got a great slideshow coming at you right after this, so hang on for a second or two and uh, enjoy some great construction uh, photos of what we had happening out there. So until next time.